Hello viewers, I am Kausalya. Today we are going to discuss about a new topic, Nyquist Stability Criteria. This again comes under the category Frequency Response Analysis. This is an another method to find whether the system is stable or unstable. Right. Now I am going to give a brief introduction about what is mean by Nyquist Stability Criteria. Right. So first, let f of s be a function. Okay, it is just a function. A function is nothing but which has numerator as well as a denominator. You see, f of s is a function as the ratio of two polynomials. Right. So here, f of s is written like this. f of s equal to s minus z1, s minus z2 and s minus zm divided by s minus p1, s minus p2 into s minus pn. Right. So, Always the denominator terms represent poles and the numerator term represents zeros. Right. Now we are telling let s be a complex variable because here we are having s. Right. So what is s? So s is a complex variable. What is meant by complex variable? It has both real term as well as imaginary term. So here I had written as sigma plus j omega. For, for an example, even we can take like this 2 plus 3j, right? It is a complex variable, right? Then the function f of s is also complex. What is mean by function f of s? Here we are having an s, right? And I am going to substitute this s in some other terms. That is known as function of f of s, right? So the function f of s is also complex. Okay, this is also a complex variable. Then how to represent that f of s? So that f of s is represented as u plus jv. Right, s is a complex variable as well as f of s is also a complex variable. Right, then the next thing is again look at this expression. Right, so here we are mentioning for every point s in the s plane right there exists a corresponding point f of s in f of s plane that is we are having two planes it is clear from this statement right we are having an s plane and we are having an f of s plane so for every point in the s plane right there is a corresponding point in the f of s plane for example, if S point has if S plane has two points, then F of S plane will be also having two points. Right. When this happens, when F of S is analytic. Right. What is meant by analytic here? So here comes the explanation. What is meant by analytic function? A function is said to be analytic if it has derivatives. What is meant by derivatives? I will explain you with an example. Let, let us assume the function as sum x square. Right. So, can we differentiate this x square with respect to x? Is this possible? Of course, yes. So, when you differentiate this term, okay, let it be f here. So, when you differentiate this f with respect to x, what happens here? The answer will be 2x. Right. So, a function is said to be analytic. So, now we can say that x square is analytic, right? If a given function is able to differentiate, then that function is known as analytic function, right? Am I making the concept clear? Right. Then, that is the condition here. If s is, that is, if f of s is analytic, that is whenever the function f of s can be differentiated, then for every point s in the s plane, we are having the same corresponding points in the f of s plane. Right. So, in other words, they are telling the function f of s maps the points in the s plane into the f of s plane. Right. The points in s plane and the points in the f of s plane are interrelated by this function. Right. Then we are going to the next term singular point. The point in the s plane where the function does not exist. That is you are having a function which cannot be differentiated. For example 
assume if you are having a constant like this whether we can differentiate this constant whenever you differentiate the answer will be zero okay we don't want zero here so this type of expressions this type of values are said to be singular points right now just look at these two diagrams i will explain the term right so here i am having two planes right one is s plane and another one is f of s plane assume i am having some four to five points in s plane right then how to represent that four to five points we are just drawing a contour contour is nothing but it is a shape okay so i am just drawing a contour assume i am having some four to po five point that is four to five analytic points inside right now the point in s plane can be represented in f of s plane right because here the points are analytic so when you represent in f of s plane again since we are having bunch of points i am using a contour again to represent it in the f of s plane contour is nothing but it is a shape right so here i am representing it in a f of s plane right i hope i had made the concept better right here i we are having bunch of points in the s plane i am representing the points in the s plane in the f of s plane so since i am having more number of points i am using some shapes to cover those points right similarly while i am representing those points in the f of s plane again i am using some shapes okay to cover all the points here right so that is the thing which is written here any number of points of analyticity in the s plane can be mapped into the f of s plane right we know this concept already provided for a contour in the s plane which does not goes through any singular point then there exist a corresponding contour in the f of s plane here just you split and read then you can understand easily i hope these two lines are clear with you right so when the points in s plane can be mapped into the f of s plane whenever the points are analytic right now i am using a contour to encircle that is to cover the points so that shape is represented as contour here provided for a contour in the s plane which does not goes through any singular point we already read that right singular points are those which cannot be differentiated so yeah for a contour in the s plane that contour should not go through that is it should not cover any singular points if that is the case then there exist a corresponding contour in the f of s plane right so when you read these lines initially together uh, seriously i assure you can't understand the things so first look at this diagram i had explained it uh, right so just understand this and then you go back and read the lines right then the next thing is here the exact shape of the contour is not required but only the number of encirclements of the origin of the f of s plane is essential that is you see here we have we have used two different contours so no need that two contours should be the same right here the main thing which we have to consider is number of encirclements of the origin that is this is our origin right so number of encirclements how many times the origin is circled that is known as encirclement right that is the main thing which we have to consider while solving a problem using nyquist stability right then the next thing is concept of encircled and enclosed so here again look at these two diagrams right so first one encircled what is mean by encircled you see here i am having two points a and b and here i am having a contour right here the point a lies inside the contour right whereas point b lies outside so here the point a is said to be encircled since it lies within the contour right so here point a is encircled right then the next thing is enclosed 
what is mean by enclosed here the direction of this contour plays an important role now again look we are having two points point a and point b right here assume you are walking in the prescribed direction right here in that path in this path you are walking so the points which lie on the right hand side of you is said to be enclosed so when you walk like this your right hand side is here right so here the point a is said to be enclosed suppose if the direction is reversed here the direction is in clockwise suppose if you assume anti clockwise right suppose assume that you are moving like this okay consider this black arrow mark so if you walk like this what is the point that lies on your right hand side it is point b right in that case point b is said to be enclosed and point a is said to be not enclosed right the next topic here is principle of argument so what is meant by principle of argument again the same thing when you read it in the form of lines you will think uh, how much bigger this is so first i'll explain what it is then it will be easy for you so the thing is this is the formula for principle of argument so it is given by p minus z p denote poles and z denote zeros right so when you subtract number of poles that is when you subtract number of zeros from number of poles that gives the n what is mean by n n is nothing but encirclement of the origin right so this is the concept of principle of argument so here that is the thing which is written difference between number of poles and number of zeros of f of s that are encircled by the chosen closed contour in the s plane anyhow we are always discussing about the points which are encircled right for encircling we are using a shape and that shape is represented as contour here right then the next thing that is the thing again here the same things are repeated we had seen these things already because again f of s here we are assuming f of s as a single valued rational function some functions right okay so it is analytic in a given region in the s plane again we all know this right only for analytic functions we can map the points from s plane to f of s plane so if an arbitrary contour is chosen in s plane so that f of s is analytic at every point on the closed contour in the s plane okay these are all the things just now we had seen again they are put it in different forms that's it then the next thing is you see the f of s plane contour mapped in the f of s plane will encircle the origin n times in anti clockwise direction right so that is we are having some points in the s plane and we are mapping those points in s plane into the f of s plane when this will happen when the points are analytic what is meant by analytic whenever the function is differentiated okay whenever the function is able to be differentiated then they are known as analytic points when that happens we can map the points in s plane into f of s plane so in f of s plane what happens the encirclement happens around the origin right that's it so finally the formula is n is equal to p minus z right so regarding this nyquist stability criteria the number of encirclements play an important role and depending upon the number of encirclements we will finally conclude whether the system is stable or unstable right here comes the end of this uh, preliminaries of nyquist stability criteria i hope you people understand the video if you have any doubt let me know in the comment section thank you